Thank you for joining us on the newsroom at one. I am Fulashadi Ogrindi. President Mohamed Bari has received the Certificate of Incorporation of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. It was presented with a certificate at the State House on Friday by the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timi Per Silva, Registrar Corporate Affairs Commission, Gaba Abubakar, and NNPC Group Managing Director, Mele Kiari. Following the signing of the Petroleum Industry Bill into law by President Mohamed Bari on August 17, Minister of State for Petroleum, Timi Prasivet said that the NNPC will become a commercial company within six months. The Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has inaugurated an incident response facility aimed at addressing cases of cyber crimes, protecting telecoms infrastructure and encouraging increased participation in the nation's digital economy. At the commissioning of the project in Abuja, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, described the centre as a strategic step in boosting cybersecurity in Nigeria. Pantami also commended the board of NCC and Dambata-led management of the Commission for ensuring successful implementation of the project. A bill seeking to provide compensation to residents around airports due to noise pollution has passed second reading at the House of Representatives. The bill seeks to amend Section 3 of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria Act to enable the agency to recognize environmental challenges affecting persons living around airports. The bill, which passed second reading on Wednesday, also seeks to set aside a specific quota of recruitment opportunities for host communities. A New Zealand's COVID-19 response minister, Chris Hipkins, has announced that more parts of the country will be placed back on their strict COVID-19 restrictions following a spike in cases. Hipkins further explained that businesses will be moved to contactless trade and education centres will close, although most are already shut due to the school holidays. With a population of 5 million, New Zealand has reported about 4,150 cases of infections since the onset of the pandemic pandemic with 28 deaths. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has urged Nigerians to embrace its digital currency, e-Naira, saying operation of the currency is safe, easily accessible, digitized and could be accessed through banks and other payment service providers. CBN's Director, Corporate Communications Department, Osita Wansinobi, made the call on Thursday during the bank's special day at the 16th Abuja International Trade Fair in uh, the Abuja. Wansinobi said the bank has put up strong measures to ensure that the fintech companies involved in the distribution of the currency do not undermine the process. The 14 men, including a former president, will go on trial in Burkina Faso from Monday over the assassination of Thomas Sankara, the country's revolutionary leader in 1987. It is almost 34 years to the day since Sankara was gunned down during a coup led by a former comrade and close friend. Suspicions have long been directed at Sankara's successor as president, Blaise Kompora, who ruled the improvised Sahel state for the next 27 years. The Super Aegis captain, Hamad Musa, has received the 99th International Cup for Nigeria after playing in the team's 1-0 loss to Central African Republic at the 2022 World Cup qualifier on Thursday. Musa got the cap when he replaced Glasgow Rangers. Joe Aribo in the 79th minute of the game played at the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos. Musa is bidding to join retired Eagles captain Joseph Yogo and Vincent Yema as the only players to have made 100 appearances for the national team. I interrupt on our news update at this hour. Thank you so much for watching. I am Paula Shadi for Green Day. Bye for now.